Hi, this is Raj Sharma. Today we'll be looking at how I utilize this Nikon Z6 setup with my Atmos Ninja 5. We'll be looking at the Apple ProRes system on how I utilize this setup to capture ProRes raw content and my workflow in Apple Final Cut Pro. Before we move ahead and start talking about the Atmos Ninja 5 system, let's have a look at Nikon Z6 and why I utilize this for creating content. Just because the size and the form of the camera, it's quite small which also allows you to have more shakes by having the sensor stability inbuilt into this camera, it removes those tiny bumps so you're still able to utilize the camera as a handheld but get nice smooth handheld shots. Most of the sample clips that I'm going to be showing you in this video are all on autofocus. Normally I touch the screen on wherever I like to focus, the focus gets locked onto the subject or an object and I'm able to move. This is quite handy as sometimes I utilize the setup for corporate videos as well. With corporate videos, you will normally have people moving around with, you know, heads turning. What if you want to film on a very fast aperture size 1.8? This is Nikon's 35mm Z mount 1.8. I love fast lenses. I love the bokeh and the depth of field that you see to be able to highlight or get a character or an object to stand out from the crowd. So here's the Atmos Ninja V mounted on to my Nikon Z6 and this is how I utilize for any run and gun shoots. This is also perfect for systems when going on tripod, handheld or even putting onto a slider. Mounting onto a gimbal, you might want to remove some accessories based on the capacity and the payload on the gimbal but this is a setup that I have been using and works perfectly for me. You can mount the monitor directly onto the hot shoe or you can utilize a magic arm and mount it onto the Kodain threads available onto this cage. For me, this setup feels right as it's not only for run and gun setup but it also allows me to capture some high-end ProRes RAW content. So when we are filming content, having a good monitor is very very important to any production. Here's some of the reasons why I prefer this Atmos Ninja V and how I utilize it in my daily setups. Firstly, as an added advantage, you get to see what you're filming on a high bright 1000 nits HDR monitor. This is perfect especially when you're filming outdoors and the sun's glaring on and you're unable to see what you're actually filming. Secondly, recording onto SSDs a must nowadays. They're affordable and with the fast read and write speeds you're able to capture high-end content such as raw video. While I'm filming, I want to be able to expose correctly. So tools such as Zebra, False Color, Waveform and so on are available on these monitors which allow you to be able to see how you capture your content and expose things correctly. Now let's have a look at the Ninja 5 and how the tools can help you shoot better content. At times, we end up filming in manual focus. By having manual focus, you are able to control what part of the footage is in focus. You'll come to situations where your focus color is the same color as the subject or the object you're trying to focus with. The monitor allows you to be able to choose the color for your focus speaking. A great way to expose is by using false color. You can use waveform, false color, zebra, many options available. As I change my ISO, you're able to see how it reflects onto the screen. Now I'm going to use zebra to be able to show you the overexposed areas. Toggling between zebra and false color gives me those overexposed areas as well. These tools have been designed to allow you to expose correctly. Different tools are available for exposure. You're able to change your monitoring settings to native, Rec 709, HLG, PQ or you're able to upload a LUT to this monitor as well. I mean whenever I'm filming, false color is my number one go-to to be able to expose and then after that I'll be using waveforms or zebras to make extended adjustments if needed. But to be able to capture raw content directly from a mirrorless camera that can do photo and video both and a hybrid camera is an advantage for me. Now this might be an underrated feature as a lot of monitors are not touchscreen. For me, touchscreen is quite important as I want to be able to quickly go to the menu or selection or to be able to customize whatever I want. I'm simply able to touch wherever I like on the screen to be able to access the menu systems that I require. Nikon Z6 has a mini HDMI connector 
So I'm utilizing Atomos's mini HDMI to full HDMI connector to be able to connect my Z6 to the Atmos Ninja V. So I've utilized the same setup for many scenarios, from corporate videos to filming outdoor in snow, um, even, even filming some hotel videos. And it has been perfect for me as to be able to capture high dynamic range, to be able to capture ProRes RAW, and taking that raw format, the, taking the raw video that you have recorded onto your computer in Final Cut, it's mind-blowing to be able to see the differences on how much you're able to manipulate in post. For me, I like to be able to have control with the content that I film. So this allows me to access that high dynamic range that I've always wanted. Let's have a look on how to connect your Nikon Z6 onto the Atmos Ninja V, the settings that you need to change in the camera and the settings that you need to change on the recorder to be able to communicate to each other. Before shooting ProRes RAW, just make sure you have the latest 10.31 firmware installed. It requires a web activation for ProRes RAW. To set up Nikon Z6 for ProRes RAW, press the menu button. Navigate to the spinner icon and scroll down to the HDMI section. Once you're in the HDMI section, go into Advanced. Under Advanced HDMI options, you will see External Recording. Ensure this is enabled. Now go into Raw Output Options, select Raw Output and select Enable. Under Raw Output Mode, you will be able to select the resolution and the frame rate you want to film in. You can now access Full Frame or Crop Mode through here, which is clearly indicated as FX and DX. Now that we have the Nikon Z6 setup, let's move on to the Atmos Ninja 5. Click on Record where it displays the codec you're filming in. While touching on codec, it changes with the options available. Since we are setting up for ProRes RAW, select ProRes RAW and it will enable the options to shoot in RAW. Under Compression, you are able to choose ProRes RAW or ProRes RAW HQ. So later on, I will be showing you my ProRes RAW workflow in Final Cut. Now the reason I utilize the setup while filming in Tahoe for the vape commercial is because I wanted to be able to capture as much as detail as possible and manipulate in post. The reason was, firstly, I did not have the budget to be able to create high-end lighting. I did not have enough crew. I did not have enough people helping me. So what I've done is I utilize this setup and just bouncing light with the reflector, I was able to capture this content. Uh -huh. Comes the fun part where we will be looking at Final Cut Pro on how I utilize ProRes RAW. When you open Final Cut Pro, the first thing you need to do is create a new library. I'm going to select my destination where I have all my files and I'm going to create a new folder. This is where my library will be saved. Let's rename this to Atomos Library. Something to note is that Wide Gamma HDR is the library. This is saying that the clips have the capability for HDR. Not that your project is going to be HDR, but it is important to do so, especially with ProRes RAW files. I have some ProRes RAW content that I have filmed. I'm going to import two files. Now when you preview any ProRes RAW files, you'll find them to be blown out. It's just because you don't have the right workspace setup. Don't get surprised because this is completely normal. Let's select the clips that we need to import and press import all. I'm going to select the clips that I have created, right click on one of the clips and select new project. Creating a new project name as Atmos ProRes RAW project. Over here, you'll be able to choose the resolution for the video. Under rendering, I'm going to leave my settings to Apple ProRes 422. This is something that you need to decide. If you have an HDR monitor, you can leave it to HDR. So this is where you decide your actual file output. It should be 709 for 709 and HDR for HDR. If you want to do HDR and monitor correctly, you need to have an HDR monitor like Atomos Sumo as well as an I.O. box. Since I've got my laptop, which I'm editing on right now, I'm going to choose standard Rec. 709 format. Now, while we scroll on the clip, you will find that to be blown out. On the top right corner, where it displays all your information, click on the I button. Once you're in the information tab, you need to scroll down and ensure 
that it is set to extended. Normally as standard, it will be set to basic. Once set to extended, you will see the extended information. Go to this section where it says raw to log conversion and select Sony S-Log3. Once you select the Sony S-Log3, you will see that the footage is now to a log workspace. With this log workspace, you're still working with raw files. Yet, by having it on log, you can actually work with something that you know. We're not turning any raw files into video. We still have the dynamic range and the color information of raw. But at this point, we are working in a log workspace. I hope to see Nikon's workspace available onto this platform later. Now let's click on camera LUTs and select S-Log3. Once this is selected, you will see that it has been overexposed again. Go onto the color corrections tab and create a new color wheel. Now let's put the master down halfway through, decrease the highlights and you'll slowly start to see the results. Use the lumographs to be able to expose correctly and get your footage to your desired look. This is what I was talking about, what I love about ProRes RAW. At the end, I can use the same wheels to do more complex adjustments. Now here's how the footage looks like. Decrease the master down, decrease the highlights. You can work with the midtones and shadows as well and you'll be able to get the footage that you desire. Do note this is the first step of getting your exposure right. After this you can create different color wheels to be able to color grade to the desired look. So now imagine to be able to use a hybrid camera and shoot ProRes RAW. This is absolutely amazing. So that was my take on the Atmos Ninja 5 on how I utilize with the Nikon Z6 and my ProRes RAW workflow. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time.